and treasures of the earth. There's no way to measure what you you were crucified and laid behind a stone. You lived to die, rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me above Above all powers, above all kings, amen. Above all nature and all created things. Above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones. Above all wonders that the world has ever known. Above all wealth and treasures of the earth. There's no way to measure what you're worth. Oh, you were crucified, laid behind a stone. You lived to die. Rejected and alone like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all You were crucified Laid behind a stone You lived to die Rejected and alone like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all Oh, hallelujah, 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 Jesus Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, you're holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Worthy to receive glory. Worthy to receive honor. Worthy to receive all our praise praise him praise him and lift him up amen praise him you can exalt his name forever oh he's holy name forever he's holy 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 is the lord god almighty worthy to receive glory worthy to receive honor worthy to receive Lift him up, amen. Praise him. You can exalt his name forever. We'll just praise. 
him praise him and lift him up praise him you can exalt his name forever oh hallelujah 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 yes praise the name of the lord in jesus name praise god amen my Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of My comfort, my shelter, he's the tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. The mountains bow down and the seas will roar. sing for joy at the work of your hands forever i'll love you and forever i'll stand nothing compares to the promise i have in you once again my jesus my jesus my savior lord there is none like you all of my days, I want to praise the wonders of my comfort. He's my shelter, refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, amen, never cease to work. Shout, you shout to the Lord, all the earth let us sing, power and majesty, praise to the King, oh the mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name, I sing for joy at the work of your hand. Forever I'll love you and forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Hallelujah. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. The mountains bow down in the sea will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you and forever I'll stand because nothing compares to the promise I have. No, nothing compares to the promise I have. No, nothing compares the promise I have in you. Come on, if you feel that way, just go ahead and lift up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can call upon the Lord if you need to him this morning. And I'm telling you, he is here in Jesus' name. The lost are saved. They find their way at the sound of your great name. All condemned, they 
feel no shame at the sound of your great name. Every fear has no place at the sound of your great name. The enemy at the sound of your great name Jesus worthy is the lamb that was slain for us he's the son of God and man you are high and lifted up and all the world will pray your great name so all the weak they find their strength at the sound of your great name the hungry souls that's right receive grace at the sound of your great name, the fatherless, oh, they find their rest at the sound of your great name. The sick are healed, amen, the dead are raised at the sound of your great name. That's right, worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us. He's the Son of God and man. You are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise. Why don't you just lift your hands in faith right now and just receive what the Lord has for you. Right here this morning, oh Jesus. He's worthy is the lamb that was slain for us. Amen. The son of God and man, you are high and lifted up. And all the world will praise your great name. Come on, even though you're weak, the Lord is strong. All the weak, praise God, they find their strength. Right here, in the sound of your great name, the hungry souls, they receive grace at the sound of your great name, the fatherless. Of your great name the sick are healed come on that's you and I amen oh hallelujah come on the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous running in our safe oh Jesus worthy is the lamb that was slain for us Oh, the Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up. And all the world will praise. Why don't you just lay hands on somebody next to you right now and pray the prayer of faith. Amen. Now, Jesus, oh, worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us. Oh, the Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise. Come on, the world needs to praise the name of the Lord. Oh, his name is Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us. He's the Son of God and man. 
are high and lifted up, oh, and all the world will praise your great name. One more time, his name is Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us. He's the Son of God and man. You are high and lifted up. And all the world will praise your great name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just give it to the Lord for just a couple of seconds. Can we do that? Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Going to give you an opportunity just to get out of your chairs for a few minutes and greet everybody. The Lord bless you this morning in the name of Jesus. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve in Jesus' name. Well, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, heaven and earth they adore him, what a mighty God we serve. Jesus is the God that we serve, Jesus is the God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth they adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh yes, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth they adore him. What a mighty God we serve. You know that it's in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons, they just have to flee. Tell me who can stand before us when we call upon his great name. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, we have the victory. Well, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. stand before us when we call upon his great name in the name of Jesus Jesus we have the victory oh it's in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we have the victory in the name of Jesus will have to flee. Tell me who can stand before us. We call upon his great name. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, we have the victory. One more time, you know that it's in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. Tell me who can stand before us when we call upon his great name. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, we have the victory. Hallelujah. Come on, let's clap our hands to the Lord. Lift up our voices to the King of Kings. 
nobody like him in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. You can be seated. The Lord bless you folks in Jesus' name. Amen. What a privilege to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bible teaches us that in his presence is that fullness of joy. Amen. And that's really the joy of the Lord. That's what we have to understand. There's joy that comes with a lot of dis different si situations. But the joy of the Lord, praise God, is something else. And there's a lot of um, a close association between the joy of the Lord and faith. A lot of times the two of them will work hand in hand. That doesn't mean that, that, you know, 10 seconds later your circumstances will change. It just means that you've got the victory, praise God, no matter what's going on in Jesus' name. Somebody feel that way that you're this morning? Been kind of a tough week, but you got through it and God was there all the time? Yeah, yeah. Praise God. And I, I and that, and a lot of my weeks are that way too, you know. Um, you know, there's been a lot of times that God and I have had some interesting discussions. One of them has been, you know, God, right now would be a very good time for you to come back. I, I've just said, right now, not right, just, let's not wait any longer. But, um, you know, and I think God has a sense of humor, or really does. I don't know if he laughed at me when I said things like that, but um, he understands our desires, you know, and sometimes the world is a little more than I, than I want, but um, nevertheless, God is good. God is good. Um, I wanna, I'm going to probably talk to you about two or three different things here this morning, if everything goes according to um, what I think it might. Um, and, and so um, you, if you feel led, you might want to write a couple of these scriptures down. These might be things that will help somebody somewhere in your journey in Jesus' name. Turn with me, first of all, to the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter number 37. And it says something there that I, I want to remind us of. <coughs> the Bible says in verse 23, 37 and 23, it tells us the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And it says, and he delighteth in his way. You ever been around people that just enjoy what they're doing? What did somebody say one time? If you ever find something that you enjoy doing, You'll never work another day in your life. And um, I, I think that that's something that a lot of us can, can think about. Amen. Enjoying the things of God in Jesus' name. Uh, 24 is kind of a reality. It says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. It says, for the Lord. Everybody say the Lord. Upholdeth. Actually, the word means to take a hold of. God knows how far you're going to sink. I think of that scripture in the, in the Gospels where... Peter, and Peter was one of these that, you know, had a, lot of, had a little bit of boldness, and um, they were out in that boat, and of course the waves were kind of slapping and that type of thing, and uh, to his credit, he saw Jesus coming, walking on the water, and um, I can just imagine, you know, I, I know what I'd be thinking, I'd go, oh, that's pretty cool, yeah, I guess we can just do away with bridges, yeah, we can just, yeah. And, of course, Peter, you know, he's, he got looking at that, and he says, well, why don't I, let me try that. Yeah. And so, you know, the thing that he had to do is he had to get out of the safety net. Of course, that was the boat. And he began to walk. And I don't know how many steps he took. The Bible doesn't tell us. But all of a sudden, because of the distractions that were around him, the winds and, 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 the, and the waves did not stop, you know, um, he began to focus on that. And he began to sink. And uh, understandably, folks, I'm not talking about a lake or a river where you're walking over this morning, but I got a feeling that there's several of you that are walking on the Word. God has told you some things, and he showed you some things in his Word. And I can tell you right now that, that, that that's good. That's what God wants to do. But sometimes when we get looking around the world and how many people aren't instead of how many people are, we sometimes have a tendency to get that sinking feeling inside, don't we? And that's why we have to allow Jesus to, to get a hold of us. The Bible says, though he fall, he will not be or shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. That's, that's a promise that God will give to you and I. David, you know, in his observation said, I've been young and now I am old. 
kind of have that feeling a lot of days, <laughs> you know. And it says, yet have not I seen the righteous forsaken. Now think about that one. That is something that we can, we can really, really um, marinate on, nor his seed begging bread. That's God's promise, praise God. If we'll walk and do according to what his will is, we can expect some good things to happen in Jesus' name. Doesn't mean that we won't be challenged. It just simply means that we're going to, we, we understand that he's going to be there. He's there all the time in Jesus' name. I haven't sang that song for a long time. I don't even know if I know where the words are, but I used to sing that a lot, that song. He was there all the time, time after time. And um, was one of my favorites to sing me because it meant so much to me, you know. Um, I don't know how many years it was after I began to serve the Lord. I don't know. I, I, I think it was God that began to give me some flashbacks. Um, and it wasn't LSD. It wasn't the drugs that I took. It was God. And I began to see areas of my life way before I came and served God. And I began to see God's hand. I began to see God there. And, and that's why that song meant so much to me. Because even though I didn't want to serve him, even though I didn't want to have anything to do with the Lord, he was there all the time. He was there all the time. And that, that, that means a great deal to me. God never leaves us or forsakes us, forsakes us. If that's going to happen, that has to be your idea. That has to be your idea. And I hope it isn't. I hope that you will find strength in the Lord this morning. You will find what you're looking for. Actually, I hope that you will find what you need. Yeah, he supplies our needs in Jesus' name. And I sense here this morning that there are many of you that have some tremendous needs. And I'm not the one that can do it. He's the one that can do it in Jesus' name. And so God will uphold us. He will if we will do it according to his will. Look at something in the New Testament to go along with that. The book of James, chapter number 4. The book of James, chapter number 4. Praise God. God is so good. Amen. He is so good. James chapter number 3. They move that book. No, that's the one. It's after Hebrews. For some reason, I thought it was before Hebrews. Yeah, I know. I know. I got it. Oh, I'm not there yet. Yeah. Okay, let's go to chapter number 4. Yeah. I like to play tricks on the sound person, especially when... She is my wife. <laughs> yeah, keep her, keep her hopping. Okay, chapter number four of James is an interesting chapter. If any of you have a hard time with blame games and stuff like that, um, I do. Is that coming over the PA system? Well, then something needs to be shut off. I heard that too before. And not that I don't mind a little competition. Can you hear that? Okay. Okay, now let's try it again. Yeah, there's the talking. <laughs> yeah, that's the one you want to shut off and then get the other one to go, huh? Yeah, let's try that one. That one was probably more interesting anyway. Did you hear it? Was it any good? <laughs> well, just just testing. Boy, we're really challenging you folks this morning. Nobody's going to nobody's going to sleep in this place today, right? Yeah. Where was I? James. Okay. James chapter number 4. I won't read the whole entire chapter. Sister Carnahan, I'm going to be getting around round verse number 6. But if you study that chapter, you got nobody to blame but yourself. That's where these conflicts come from. And so that's what we have to recognize. But the good news is, is in verse number six, that's why I'm starting there. The scripture says, but he giveth more grace. Amen. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Wow, what an offer. What an offer. And then it says to submit yourself, or actually it just means to be obedient. That's what that word means in the Greek. It means be obedient. It says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God, and then resist the devil. Now, somebody in here, I got a feeling, has got that turned around. 
No, I'm not indicting you, and I'm not going to stare too long at any individual so that you get a complex, but I sense that. I sense that you've been trying to resist the devil without obeying God, and no wonder you're frustrated. No wonder he's been really kind of having his way with you. No wonder you have those thoughts that, that you feel like giving up and all that kind of business. But that, that needs to end right here today, praise God. See, God wants to give you grace. Grace is actually an enabler. Grace is when God does give us what we don't deserve. He gives us power. He gives us strength. He gives us the ability, praise God. But you aren't going to get that when you're prideful. You're not going to get that if it's your idea. You're not going to get that if it's, you know, if you want to do your thing. And I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what probably is wrong in your life right now. That could be greatly corrected right here this morning, and it could make a tremendous difference with the rest of with, with, with this next week. Anybody interested in that? Anybody interested in getting the cart or getting the horse out in front of the cart cart here today? What do you say? I know that God has been dealing with you about the word, because that's how He deals with all of us. He'll give us the word. You, you only have to read it once or twice, and it'll still it'll be there. Years later, it'll still be there because that's how powerful the word is. And so if you've got a little bit of commitment left in you and you say, well, listen, I'm going to get that, that, horse, that horse out there before the court, cart and I'm going to begin to obey God. Praise God. I want you to lift your hand right now. Come on. If you feel that, that you have that need to do that, praise God. Now, the Bible says ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. So why don't we just take about 30 seconds right now and do that. Come on, you know what God's dealing with you about. Come on, it might be something major. It might be something just huge in your life right now. If you'd start doing it, praise God, it would make all the difference in the world. Praise God. Oh, come on, I, I sense that right now. Come on, do you feel that hope coming in here right now? Come on, that's God. That's God because he honors his word. The scripture tells us at the end of the, of, of the gospel of Mark that Jesus went with them confirming the word with signs following. I'm telling you, God's going to confirm that. If you'll be obedient to what God has told you to do right now, I guarantee you the devil is no match in the name of Jesus. But we got to get that horse before the cart now. Come on, we got to do that. Obey the Lord. Submit yourself unto God is what the scripture says. Obey what he tells you to do. Even if you don't understand it, even if it's something you've never ever done before, I'm telling you, if you'll have faith enough to say, okay, I'm going to give that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that in Jesus' name, I'll guarantee you, praise God, you're not going to have, you know, the devil can't mess with people like that, he can't do it, because the Bible says, if we'll obey God and then resist the devil, he will flee, praise God, you want to know why? Because he's not seeing you, he's seeing what you're doing with God's word, and he's afraid of that, he don't like that kind of thing, in in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody here, you can get that. You can do that. In the Oh, that's right. Come on, I'm telling you, the Lord is ministering right now in this place. Praise God. Should we go home? Hey, I'm telling you right there, that's enough right there. Now, I don't think that's all God has for us, but boy, that's enough. If we could learn just to obey God, you know, read that word and say, God, you're speaking directly to me. That's me you're speaking to, and just take heed to it, praise God. In fact, the Bible uses the term, take earnest heed to the things which, you have, sa uh, which have been said, lest at any time they slip away. See, that's what happens with God's word if we don't obey it, is all of a sudden we won't remember it. But I'll guarantee if you start obeying God's word, that word will never leave your heart. It will be there all the time in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, live for God, living for God is a very simple process, but it takes time, it takes effort, it takes work, praise God. And that's why God wants to change our focus from what we think should happen to what he knows will happen if we will do his will in Jesus' name. And so the Bible says here that we can. We can take authority in this world over the, over the demonic kingdom. And then the Bible says in verse number 8, something that is a byproduct of, of, of verse number 7. If you will obey God and resist the devil, the word, the word resist there just simply means to oppose him. It doesn't mean that you've got to put on your gloves and fight him. 
That's not what it's talking about. It's just talking about by obeying God, you already oppose him. Because he's already decided he's not going to do what God wants him to do. He's already settled that one. So when you begin to do that, that's enough for him. The battle is over. He will leave in Jesus' name. That's why it's so important that obedience become part of our fiber. That we begin to not only be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. That's what Jesus taught in the Gospels. And so some of us in this building right now, we haven't quite got to that extent with your commitment with God. And that's not me sizing you up. That's just me telling you what's wrong. And if you'll begin to do that this week, today, if you'll start doing that, I'm guaranteeing you that things are going to begin to happen. And what will happen is you'll begin to get closer to God. You will draw closer to him. And guess what happens after that? Come on, it's right there. If we draw nigh unto him, he doesn't wait. He'll just come. Praise God. And so it's not because of how long you've been in the church. It's not because of who you know or what family you were born into. It's just understanding these principles. Because the Bible says, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your, hand, you, your, hand, your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep and let your laughter be turned to mourning, you know, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. There it is, folks. You can take that home with you. I would encourage some of you to read that every day this next week and take it personally. Ask the Lord how that can be applied to your life in today's world. And I'll guarantee you God will give you understanding. He will because he can do that. I can tell you things that affected my life and I think it might help some of you but probably not all of you because some of you don't have the background that I have. And that's why I'm limiting more and more of that in, in my teaching. Because I realize that. Just because I had to go through that doesn't mean that everybody else does. But the word of God is the same. It'll take your life and it'll make it better in Jesus' name. That's what God's word is designed to do. But you're going to have to, first of all, hear it, which I commend you for coming today and hearing the word of God. And then you're going to have to make up your mind that you're going to begin to do it. And not just once, but you're going to become faithful to it, praise God. And I'm going to tell you something, it, it, it'll, it'll revolutionize your life in Jesus' name. One more time, why don't you just hope, close your eyes and just lift up your hands right now and ask the Lord to give you understanding to what I just got done saying. You, you, you understanding, your understanding. What does that mean to me, God? How does that affect what I'm doing right now? What does that really mean? Oh, hallelujah. I've, I'll tell you right now, I sense the, the power of God in this place to give understanding to everyone that is in this place right now in Jesus' name. Oh, wow. Wow. Boy, he's good. He is absolutely good. I'm telling you, there's nobody like God. Oh, no competition. Oh, Wow, wow, I know there's many of you, you sense that right now, and I just want to confirm to you that's real, that's God, that's him, that's him reaching towards you, praise God. He loves you, he cares for you. Let me put it this way, he wants to make his love available to you. He wants you to know really what that means, praise God. Because I've said this before, and I'll say it again this morning in light of what I just got done saying, there are some things that you and I cannot produce, they tell me, psychologists tell me that there are some things in your brain that can reproduce themselves, but after damage has been done or, or maybe some kind of an injury or maybe whatever, the consequences of life, if they quit producing that, you've got to have help. And I'm sure some of you that are in the medical field, you know what I'm talking about. But I've watched and I've seen God just renew that, praise God. That's why I'm telling you, we're talking about a God that operates every day in the gift of miracles. And miracles are just something supernatural that you and I could never, ever, ever do on our best day. We couldn't do it. And so you and I must understand God's not trying to manipulate you. He's trying to supply you. And there are certain things that you cannot 
you cannot reproduce. Faith is one of those. The Bible says in the 12th chapter of the book of Romans that he gives to every person the measure of faith. He gives you enough to get started. Now, he's not going to keep pouring it in. You're going to have to stretch that faith. You're going to have to use that faith. That's why the Bible says in the same book, James, in the second chapter, faith without works is dead. And that's why the faith that God has already supplied you with sometimes can go dormant. And we wonder, why? Why am I having such a hard time right now? It's because probably you're not using it. You're leaving it lay. And you want somebody else to do it for you. Now listen, we all come by that honestly because this is the culture that we have risen up. We've risen up a very welfare-ish type of culture. And everybody wants everybody else to do it. That's just what it is. And that's not the way it works in the kingdom of God totally. God supplies your need. Then it's up to you to bring that need to every place in your life. And I'm telling you, it's big enough to supply everything in Jesus' name. Now, somebody might be asking the question here today, well, how do I do that? How do I, how do I, how do I get started? And maybe I can help you today, okay? Maybe I can help you. I, I, I remember where I was at. You know how it is. There are certain events in life that you just, you're like, well, I remember that. I remember where I was at, you know. And I won't go through some of the events, but um, um, one of them in particular is I remember the day that John F. Kennedy was shot. I mean, I can, uh, right now, I can close my eyes and I can see where I was at and the fear that came over me. Even as a young boy, I was only like six years old when that happened. But nevertheless, well, no, I was I, like seven or eight maybe at the time. But I can remember the fear that I felt. And that has never left me. That event was just absolutely, whoa. I mean, I'll never forget that. But another event I'll never forget was in 1969. In, in, in July, I'll never forget the night, we sat out on the picnic table and listened to the radio broadca broadcast. And it was the night that they landed on the moon. Now, to some of you conspiracy theory people, they landed in Hollywood, okay? Is that what you think? I'm dumb, I'm, I'm naive. I, 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 I believe they landed on the moon, okay? And I believe right away when they landed on the moon, they learned, praise God, some things. Because I remember they were talking about the fact that they made that pod that came down. They made the little feet that, you know, that come into the, into the moon. They made them purposely pretty big because they were anticipating because of the, what they thought was the age of the world. They thought that there would be two or three, maybe four feet of moon dust. Well, now, they won't tell you that, but that, that, that is documented. And when they landed that pod, there was only just a few inches. So much for the evolution theory, right? See, God, I don't think he laughs, but he just shows us. Even science can be shown some things. But I'll never forget that. You know, and as a young, you know, uh, teenager, I, I can't tell you that I, I really was into it, you know, that type of thing. I had other things I wanted to do. I had other places I needed to go and all that kind of business. But for some reason, just a rebellious teenager stopped doing what he was doing and contemplated this, contemplated this feat that mankind had done. And I mean to tell you, folks, I don't, I'm not trying to understand it. I'm just saying it was, a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a time stopper for a lot of people. But what he said, he is in Neil and, um, Armstrong. I don't know if you remember what he said. But he said that when he stepped off of that or just before he stepped off of that ladder, does anybody remember what he said? You're mumbling. Come on, you got to tell us. What did he say? That's right. He said, that's one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind. Now, listen to me, folks. He wasn't far off from the kingdom of God. That's a lot of times how the kingdom of God works. We'll keep coming to services. We'll keep believing God. We'll keep doing the things that we know that are right. And all of a sudden, it's like, the, you know, half of our world moves and something powerful happens. That's the same analogy, folks, with the kingdom of God. And that's why you and I, in my opinion, we have to learn to take small steps. 
You know, as a minister, as, as a pastor, as in whatever other position I'm in, overseer, bishop, whatever, you know, one of the things that I'm constantly um, uh, watching and, 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 and trying to notice with people, not that I'm trying to get in your business, and it doesn't take me very long to do this anymore, but what I'm doing constantly is monitoring what direction are you going? And I'm not talking about north, south, east, and west. There's two major directions, in my opinion, in life. You're either coming towards God or you're going away from him. There's no middle ground, folks, because that's one of the biggest deceptions with people who stop and want to take a break and take vacations and take sabbaticals with the Lord is they don't understand that they're actually moving backwards. They're moving away from God. And that is a huge deception for a lot of people. I believe there's probably a couple of people in here right now that that's where you're at. And, I, and, I, and, and God wants to help you. But that direction, praise God, that is the big thing. Are we coming towards God? That's why the Bible says in that scripture that I told you, draw nigh unto God, which is basically start coming towards him. Don't be afraid of him. Go, no, go close to him. And we already found out how that happens. It's by hearing that word and obeying it and then opposing the devil with what we're doing with God's word. So you don't fight the devil. What you do is you oppose him when you obey God's word. The scripture says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds or mindsets casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And then it says, and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. That's why it's effective. Things will begin to happen. And you can begin to take those small steps, praise God. Now, come on, folks, that was, a, that was a step that probably millions upon millions of Americans saw. They saw him take that step off of that spaceship. Everybody saw that. But what most people, almost everybody, nobody saw all the little steps that it took to get to that place. And this is what disturbs me about this generation, is they want the splash. They want the big event. Let's rent out the biggest coliseums. Let's have the biggest shindig we can have. And I'm not, I'm not all the way directly opposed to that. But sometimes we lose track of the fact of what does it take to get there? What does it take to bring ourselves to that level, praise God? And that's what God is trying to get across in this place here today. Because there's not anybody in this place, praise God, that can't begin to take some small steps, praise God, towards the Lord. I already told you how you can do it. You get that Bible, you start reading it like God is sitting there in the chair right next to you reading it to you. And you begin to start applying it, asking him if you don't know, asking him how do I apply that word to my life today? Not next month, not next year, but right here today. What do I need to do today? The Bible says that a lot. Today is the day the Lord hath made. We can be glad and rejoice in it, in Jesus' name. That scripture actually is talking about the time that Jesus entered into Jerusalem, praise God, just prior to his death. But folks, that wasn't the only step that Jesus took. There were a lot of steps that had to take place. And this is what I'm trying to encourage somebody with right now. Get up off of that seat and start taking some steps towards the Lord. That's what you can do here today. You want a homework assignment? I just gave you one. Come on, I'm telling you right now, you can do this. You don't have to sit back and suck your thumb and say this isn't for me because the Bible says all. Oh, come on, God loves everybody in the name of Jesus and this is what he's got designed for you come on and I'm not saying something you know something powerful won't happen from time to time 
praise God. I think of our services the last few months on Sunday nights and how powerful they have been. But folks, there's a lot of little steps that are taking place during the week. There's a lot of people that are going to prayer rooms and praying. There's a lot of people that are sowing the seed, praise God, in this city for this kind of stuff. That's what I'm talking about. Are you ready to start joining a crew like that? Come on, do you want to stay on the sidelines forever? Come on, why don't you jump off of the stands right now and make up your mind? I'm going to get in there and I'm going to play this game. I'm going to do something in the name of Jesus. Come on, it doesn't have to be big. It just needs to be small steps. Small steps. God, praise God. And so it's not complicated, folks. It never has designed to be complicated. We're the ones that take the simple things of God and complicate them. God takes the complexities of life and simplifies them for us. That's how it works. Praise God. You know, how did he create the world? You know, my goodness, we could go into the intricate and all that kind of stuff. But he just said, I spoke the worlds into existence. I have that kind of power. And so this is how he does things, praise God. And so he'll speak into your life with his word because the word is powerful. It really is. And the only thing that limits it is you. In fact, it says that, I think it's in the book of Psalm 73 or something like that, when it's talking about the nation of Israel. One of the problems they had is it says it in there. It says that they limited the power of God. And how they limited it was unbelief. Now, unbelief can come in different packages, but one of the renditions of, 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 of unbelief means to be unfaithful. And so God is constantly trying to help us to take that small step of faithfulness. Do it once, then do it again. Do it again, and just become repetitive for the kingdom of God. And you'd be surprised how much you will begin to retain. I'm not listening to some of you old geezers. You're telling me that my memory's going to go and you're going to have all kinds of struggles like that. Listen to me, folks. You can do what you want, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to believe in the renewing of the mind. I'm going to believe in the, in the transforming of my mind in Jesus' name. I'm not going to forget these things. Now, I might forget some of the events that happened to me when I was in high school and stuff like that, and so be it. But I'm not going to forget the things that are in this Bible. And you know something? With God's help, I don't have to in the name of Jesus. Come on, folks. We don't have to limit the Holy one we don't have to limit what he can do in your life I'm telling you right now you can make up your mind that I'm going to get with that program I'm going to stop putting the cart before the horse I'm going to start putting the horse before the cart I'm going to start obeying God I'm going to submit myself to his word and then I uh, the devil is going to go the devil is going to go in Jesus name now, I wrote this down one time because I thought it would be helpful, and I probably have told some of you this before. But a step, when we talk about step, remember what he said, Neil Armstrong. He said, that's one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind, you know. And again, that one has lived. I mean, let's face it, most of, there's some people in this place that could quote that. So that made a significant, um, you know, uh, 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 deal in your mind. I know there's a lot of you that weren't, that weren't around when that happened, but boy, I mean to tell you folks, it was, it was a defining moment for mankind. It really was. And like I said, it took a lot of steps to get to that place. I was telling somebody the other day, I don't know why it came up, but the subject came up about resistance. And resistance is real, folks. The biggest resistance you have is not the devil, by the way. Oh. Your biggest and my biggest resistance is our flesh. The devil just has to make one suggestion, and your flesh will fly right, in, right into it. That's how it works. And so you can't eradicate the flesh. You can't do that. You know, it's called death, okay, when you do that. And so you can't do that. And so we have to understand that resistance is real. But way, 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 say 12, 15 years before a man landed on the moon, you know, our nation, you know, started a program, and it was actually before... Kennedy got in. I know Kennedy was one of the ones that accelerated it. Uh, John F. Kennedy that was. He was one of the ones that when he came into power, he really um, uh, uh, lobbied hard. 
And one of the reasons was the motivation was is because Russia was doing it. Go back in history, folks, and you're going to find out that, you know, this nation has feared the communist movement for a long time. And rightly so, because they're, they're opposing. One is godless, and the other one is God. It is. Now, I don't think the United States is, is there the way it was, but, and I'm not trying to be critical, but that's really what it was. And so one of the motivations behind getting this space program accelerated was the fact that, my goodness, they've already done it. They're up there, and we better get up there. And so the United States began to, in my opinion, walk a little faster. But even before that, what they did was they always have had people. There's always been people around that have different fear levels. I used to run around with a guy. His name was Greg. And when he got behind the wheel of the car, I mean, he had no fear. Well, very little, okay? Leastways, he had a good way of hiding it. Because about the time I think he should be slowing down. And I mean, I've ridden with that guy when I was young, and I, I, know I don't glorify this at all, but he scared the bejeebies out of me several times. Of course, being a smart aleck teenager, you know, you never wanted to show that. Oh, that was fun, wasn't that great? Oh, man, that was fun. And you're thinking all the time, I better get out of the car and go to the bathroom here and find out if I did any damage. Now, I'm just being very real. You, know, you understand people like that. And I'm glad for people like that. Now, in my opinion, again, to put it in a spiritual sense, there are people in the kingdom of God that are like that. You walk around them, and I mean to tell you folks, you can tell. And they're not perfect. They're not the richest person in the county, but boy, there's just something there. They don't have any fear. And I like being around people like that. I'm talking about the spiritual sense. Now, those of you that are, that are afraid all the time, um, you know, I'll be around you and I'll teach you, but you're not my favorite. And I'm not saying that to slam you. I'm just saying it's because you drain me. It takes a lot of what I have to just keep you floating. Now, I'm working very hard with that in this church to try to help you with that through the direction of the Lord. And some of you have been resisting it. You've even told me I've been mean and even started crying and even went home and you and your husband had a real interesting conversation about that mouthy little preacher. Now, I'm not putting you down. I'm just saying I understand that. And I understand what that is. That's resistance. And you're going to have to deal with that. Because you're going to have to overcome that resistance. You're going to have to help do that. Chuck Yeager was the one, one of the guys in history. Some of you might remember who he is. He was a test pilot. And he was one that would go up in these airplanes before they had the space rockets. And he, his, one of his drives was to go faster. I think he must have been the great uncle or the uncle of this Greg guy. I'm just serious. My goodness. He just wanted to go faster. Faster, faster, faster. And so he, I remember reading an excerpt from his book because a lot of things happened during that era and a lot of good men lost their lives. And it wasn't their fault, it was the fault of the people who were building the planes. They had no idea what they had to put into these planes to resist that up there. This was foreign territory. They'd never been there before. Now listen to me, folks. I got about 15 minutes left and I'm going to help somebody here. I know that's where some of you are at right now. I know you're on foreign territory. You've never been in this deep in this apostolic movement before in your entire life. And there's a little bit of fear there. And there's quite a bit of resistance. And God wants to help you with that. Because he's really got a plan for you. And that's why you're going to have to take some steps. You're going to have to take some faith steps. Well, this guy named Chuck Yeager, he tells the story about times when he would go up in, in, into these planes and they were flying not only faster, but they were flying, uh, uh, you know, uh, taller, what's the word, further away. And I mean, these, I mean, they were going in, way up into the sky. And he tells about how he would get to a certain speed, and all of a sudden, he said, the plane would begin to vibrate. And this is what happened to some of those planes. They actually disintegrated, and people lost their lives because the planes weren't capable of handling that pressure. And that's where some of you are at right now. Your flesh, 
your weakness in your body and your spirit and your mind isn't able to handle this. And that's why you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's why you need God's plan in your life. Because you're not going to be able to resist these things or come, come away with it unless you have the power of God. That's why the scripture says in the book of Ephesians, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Take on the whole armor of God. And that's how you stay strong. Now that's a whole other lesson. And I'd love to give it to you. But I want to center on this resistance thing. Because I think this is where, there's, there's, there's quite a few of you, this is where you're at. And he talks about the fact that several times when he went up there, he said it got to the place where he felt like the plane was going to fall apart, and so he would back off. And I, can, I, I know that's where some of you have been in the spirit. God has wanted to do some of these things, but you've resisted it, and you got fearful. But he talks about the time when he broke the sound barrier. And I don't know what that is, 4,000 miles an hour, something like that, I, 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 something in that realm. But he talks about the fact that when he finally did it, and believe me, folks, this didn't happen over a weekend. This didn't happen in somebody's garage. They didn't just wake up one morning and say, hey, we're going to break the sound barrier. No, this took a lot of steps. And this is what they did. And he talks about the idea that one day he went up there and he said through all of the resistance, he was able to get through it. And I remember when I was a kid, you know, um, back in Iowa, that in the summertime especially, probably once or twice a week, we'd hear them. We'd hear those booms. And we got used to it. I mean, because it was, it was planes breaking the sound barrier. And you could literally hear it. Now today, I don't think you can. Or maybe you just, they're up there that far. I don't know what the case is. But the bottom line is, I can remember that as a child, hearing those sonic booms. And he said when he finally got through that sound barrier, he said he discovered something. He said that the resistance that was keeping him from going faster now was behind him. And it was pushing him and accelerating him faster and faster and faster. Can I give you an example of this in the scriptures? This actually happened. Go with me to the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings. And let me show you an example of this. This actually happened, folks. I wasn't there, but I can just about imagine how this looked. It must have been something. Look at 1 Kings chapter number 18. And the Bible says there, This is the two major characters here. One is Elijah, and the other one is Ahab. One is resisting, and one is trying to push through. It's exactly what happens to us sometimes. But what happened was, in verse number 41, 41, 18 and 41, you're going to have to read the rest of the chapter to get the story. This is when Elijah went up into the Mount Carmel, and the fire of the Lord came down. But more importantly, what happened after that? Here's what I want you to see. The Bible says, And Elijah said to Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Now that doesn't mean much for us just reading that scripture, but there hadn't been any rain for three and a half years. And Elijah's making the announcement, It's gonna rain. And the Bible says, so Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. Boy, you talk about a contrast. Ahab went to the restaurant. Elijah went to the prayer room. There's a direct contrast there. And I could really work this over, but I don't have the time. I've only got just a few minutes left here, and I want to try to help somebody here. Remember what we've been talking about here. We've been talking about a lot of things. Small steps. We're talking about resistance. We're talking about the very, very easily applicable plan of God. Submit yourself to him. Obey what he says. And then resist the devil. That will actually come. Draw nigh unto him, and he will draw nigh unto you. Now, I'm bringing it back down so that you can receive this again, so that you can understand this is for you today. 
God, I believe, has already given most of you understanding to how that applies to your life right now. What needs to go and what needs to stay. I don't even have to do that. God's good enough to do that. Well, the Bible says, after he went up there to Mount Carmel and was praying, this is Elijah, and he said to his servant, go up now and look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and he said, there's nothing. Now, obviously, it took some clouds for this rain to come. And so this is what he was looking for. And the Bible says, go again seven times. What reminded me of this story was I walked around this building this morning again seven times. Anything that was resisting God's word, I believe, fell in Jesus' name. Now, that's not because of me. That's because of God's word. Now, the Bible says, and it came to pass at the seventh time. You'd be surprised how that number seven comes up a lot of times in the Bible. It says that he said, behold, scholars, come on, it wasn't some huge low-pressure front coming in. You had to really pay attention to see a cloud the size of a man's hand. That's why, again, some of you are struggling because you can't see what God does first. Sometimes you see what he's doing in other people's lives, but they've been there when there was just a little cloud. And they kept doing it. And the Bible says, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. See, I didn't make that up. It says, and he said, Go up. Say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. That was enough for Elijah. He said, it's begun. And that's why I like to hang around with people in the spirit that don't have a lot of fear. Because I've learned that they can see that little cloud a lot of times quicker than I can. And that's what we need to understand sometimes. Now, here's what I want you to see also. The Bible says, And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel, which was about 20 miles away. He got in his chariot. And the Bible says, But here's something different. And Elijah is not 18 years old, folks. He's getting up there. And the Bible says, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. And he girded up his loins, which means at that time they were wearing, they wore robes. And men and women all wore robes, the same type of clothing. But men's robes were built a little bit different. And they were built with a little slit in them so that when they were doing work in the field so it wouldn't get in their way, they could actually take that flap and tuck it in. And that's what Elijah did. He took that flap and he tucked it in because he was going to begin to hoof. And the Bible says he took his, girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Now I want to remind you of something here. Ahab had a chariot. He had horses. But what, a what Elijah had was the hand of the Lord. Oh, I'm telling you right now, this is what God wants to do. He wants to put his hand on your life. But he cannot do that if you resist his word. And that's why some of you are at a little bit of a disadvantage here today. But that little small step can begin to change today. You can make up your mind that praise God, I'm going to start taking steps towards God. I'm going to start taking the word of God literally for me. And I'm going to begin to submit myself unto God, which means I'm going to obey what his word tells me to do. And then the byproduct of that will be the devil has to leave. And then I'm going to draw closer to God than I ever have before. And you're going to begin to see some things happen in your life like you never have before. Now listen to me, folks. That's for you. 
that's God's message for you. But I understand, and I am absolutely been around this thing long enough to realize that you can go on and you can resist the things of God all you want. And I'm not going to be negative, folks. In fact, I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I'm done. I'm going to go play the piano. You can do with this what you want. And we got a few minutes. We do. You can sit there and you can talk to the person next to you and say, you know, that guy really has gone off the edge, hasn't he? I mean, he really does. I mean, that new office back there, that, that, the, the, the glue that they put the carpet down must be really getting to our pastor now. I mean, this guy is really insane. He's saying things that are really stupid. Well, you can say that if you want, or you can say, you know something? That's exactly what I've been looking for in my life, and I'm going to do something about it. I'm not going to sit here and let my life dwindle any longer. I'm going to let the power of the Lord, in fact, I'm going to let the hand of the Lord to come upon me. And I'm telling you something, folks, you're going to see power in the name of Jesus like never before, praise God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I know I don't need to say anything else, folks. You can sense that. That's the Lord that you're feeling, by the way, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's why there is a variation of how people are responding to this. There is a difference. I'm telling you, you can do it your way in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. Oh, when I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and how he turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground, it makes me want to shout, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. It makes me want to shout, oh, hallelujah. Why don't you do what the Lord wants you to do right now? It be worthy. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all of the praise when I think about the Lord. Please don't look at me. You can close your eyes and give it to the Lord right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'll let it drown. It makes me want to shout. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. Now, I'll tell you what, folks. I'm going to try to do this as diplomatically as I can. But if you want a closer walk with the Lord, I want you to come out of that chair and come down here to this altar right now, if that's what you desire. If you don't, please don't come. I forget sometimes how elementary I have to get, but that's okay. That's okay. I just helped you to make the first move. That's what I did. I just helped you to make the first move. Now, I know this is of God because he wants you to come closer. And this altar represents the place where God is at. And so I'm not trying to be over significant here, but praise God now. Can, I, I think you're going to feel a prayer a little bit deeper down here than you would back there in the name of Jesus. Now, the other thing I'm going to ask you to do is to begin to lift up your voice in prayer. Don't listen to the person that's next to you right now. You begin to pray. You begin to ask God. That's what the Bible says. Ask and you shall receive. Come on, that's what God wants you to do right now. Now, you know you need a closer walk with him or you want one. Now, ask him, how can I do this, God? 
What part of your word can I put in my life today that will cause this to happen? Come on, I'm telling you right now, in the name of Jesus, that's, that's, a, uh, that's the simplicity of him. In the name of Jesus, that's how God operates. That's how, oh my goodness, there's several of you that are already into it right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's let the Lord have his way for just a few minutes. Come on, let's let God have his way. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, now, come on, let's ask, let's ask God not to help us to resist. Let's just let it flow. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Mm, hallelujah, Jesus. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Come on, I'm telling you, God is here. That's right. You're not going to be the same because of a service like this. You're not going to be the same because of those little steps you just took. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, you see how simple it is? Oh, that's what I'm talking about. This isn't Hollywood. We're not making this up. This is of God. Come on, we're just obeying his scripture right now. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Come on, let's take a few more minutes now. Come on, let's take a few more minutes. I'm just trying to encourage you. Some of you, you're just operating under too much fear. That's what the problem is. And we can overcome that because greater is he. Come on, greater is he that's in us. Oh, that's right. That's right. You feel something in your belly right now? Let it out. In the name of Jesus. That's it. Let that out. In the name of Jesus. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Come on, what a mighty God we serve. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's it. That's it. Come on, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost and fire. That's what's keeping us alive. In the name of Jesus. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Come on, let's try it a little bit more. Come on, just a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's it. The hand of the Lord come upon them. Fill them with the Holy Ghost, Lord God. Help them to see in the Bible what they need to do to be saved. That's it. Fill them with the Spirit. That's it. That's it, Lord God. Let it overflow. Let it be demonstrated. Get rid of that embarrassment. Get rid of that, that embarrassment that brings fear in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, I'm going to be a little bit bold. Now, I want you to stop what you're doing. I want you to stop what you're doing here. I know that's something we don't hear very much. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I'm going to try to, try to help. There's, there's just a small percentage here that you still, there's a bit of resistance. And I, I'm, I'm not here to embarrass you or make you do anything. I'm just going to try to, with the help of the Lord, create an atmosphere where it can happen, where it can happen. And let me remind you of a time that that did happen. The nation of Israel was going into the promised land. And the first thing they, they found, or one of the first places they found, was a place called Jericho, which was ungodly. They didn't want God. And it was a very fortified city. And they were resisting the Lord. And so Joshua, who was the general, he had to get the marching orders from God. And the marching orders was, again, seven. For seven days, I want you to march around that city. And you must understand, folks, can you imagine what some of those people were saying by about the third or fourth day from the city? They might have been picking up things and trying to, trying to throw them at them. I understand resistance. And I understand the flesh is a big resistor. But because God gave him that specific marching order, he did it. And he encouraged the people. And that's why I believe after seven days, people who weren't encouraged the first day, I believe were starting to get a little bit of faith by about the fourth or the fifth day. Now, I believe in these kind of things, folks. And that's what my job is sometimes, is to help people to get from that first day to the seventh day. Because something powerful wants to happen. There are walls in some of your lives that need to come down. And I'm telling you, God can help you with that. Just like he helped the nation of Israel. And the seventh day was different. He said, I want you to go around seven times. Now I understand there was a purpose in what God was doing. But this is what I want you to understand. When they got done with that marching around. He gave them marching orders. He said, I want you to shout. 
I want you to praise the Lord. And some of you, that, some of you have been resisting that. And I don't know why. I don't know why you're embarrassed with this anymore. Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Did God, did God baptize you in Jesus' name and forgive you for all of your sins? What is the deal? Why do you resist that? Are you worried about what people are going to think of you? Are you worried about what everybody's going to say? Come on, I'm trying to help some of you. I'm trying to help some of you, not embarrass you. Come on, I'm telling you right now. You can resist, you can get through that right now in the name of Jesus. As you can already hear, some already are. Some are already on the other side. Come on, if you got something left in your being, why don't you begin to shout unto the Lord like the song says. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. My Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, let's take another 30 seconds. Come on, let's move in. Some of them aren't as embarrassed now as they used to be. Come on, you can worship him. You can praise him. He inhabits the praises of his people. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I want you to do something because I don't want this to move quickly. If you're around somebody that you're comfortable with, I want you to lay your hands on that person right now. And I want you to pray for them. I want you to pray this very specific prayer that whatever's been going in on in this place this morning will not, will not leave them, that they will remember this, that they will have reminders of this. Pray that prayer for the person next to you right now. No, I'm not trying to manipulate you. I'm not trying to make you do something. I'm trying to get you to understand like the servant of Elijah, that it only takes a small cloud. That's all we need to see. And then we need to operate by faith. And then when the hand of God comes upon you, like it did Elijah, you're going to be able to do things you've never thought you could do. You're going to be able to endure like you've never been able to endure before. You're going to be able to teach. You're going to be able to preach. You're going to be able to present this thing like never before in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's pray for one another right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Let's clap our hands to the Lord now. Come on, let's give him another round of applause. Praise and glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Now, one last thing I want to tell you. One last thing, and this is just a word of encouragement. To some of you, that was a huge step for you to get out of that chair. I understand that. And I'm not here to embarrass you or make fun of you or anything like that, but I understand that was a step. But it was a good step. And I want you to consider coming back and taking more steps. Take small steps towards God. And you'd be surprised within a week or two weeks or a month or half a year how things start to look a lot differently than they ever have. That's how the kingdom of God operates, folks. If you come back tonight, I'm going to talk to you about leaven. And I'm not going to spoil a good message, but boy, I'm going to tell you something. There's some things about leaven that we need to understand. And I believe the Lord will be here tonight to help you with that. Praise God. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Come on, has this been worth it? Come on, it's been good, hasn't it? Come on, this ain't the dentist office. This is the house of God. He does great things. Praise God. Services begin in the prayer room tonight if you want to come. If you got a tither and offering, you can leave it at the door. Why don't you greet one another and tell everybody you're glad you came to church in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Well, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. The angels, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. 
we serve. Now Jesus said it, I believe it. Hallelujah. In the Bible, I'll believe it until I die. Though the mountains be removed and cast into the sea, his word shall live forever throughout eternity. Jesus said it, I'll believe it. His word cannot lie. It's written in the Bible, so I'll believe it until I die. Though the mountains be removed and cast into the sea, his word shall live forever throughout eternity. What a mighty God we serve. That's right. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth, they adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, let's look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body, and then he touched my mind, and then he saved me just in time. So I'm going to praise his name. His name is still the same. I'm going to praise him. Come help me praise him. And look what the Lord has done. Oh, let's look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body, and then he touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. His name is still the same. I'm going to praise him so you can come help me praise him. And look what the Lord has done. Oh, he's done so much for me. the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. Praise.